Okay, so welcome to this next video on synaptic vesicle fusion. Okay, so so far what we've seen is we've seen this massive great complex of proteins which is involved in docking uh, a synaptic vesicle at the plasma membrane, but not allowing it to fuse yet, just docking it at the membrane. Then we've seen that when an action potential arrives in the axon terminal, it's converted into a calcium signal within the cytoplasm of the axon terminal. The calcium binds to and activates the C2A and the C2B domain of synaptotagmin. Okay, and synaptotagmin, so far we've seen that it's going to bind to syntaxin 1, and that may well help uh, the fusion of the um, synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane. And also, very importantly, it interacts with this protein complexin and changes its function. Initially, it was a clamp protein and was preventing uh, the um, snare, core snare complexes from completely zippering up and bringing the synaptic vesicle membrane too close to the plasma membrane. Now, it's going to actually turn completely over the, on the other side, and it's going to actually facilitate the core snare complexes in bringing the synaptic vesicle membrane close to the plasma membrane. Now, uh, we're also going to look at another function by which synaptotagmin promotes fusion. And this is a something I really think I want you to understand, which is that synaptotagmin doesn't seem to just have one mechanism by which it causes fusion. There seem to be multiple mechanisms by which it acts to promote uh, the fusion of the synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane. Okay, so we're now going to look at its interaction with lipids in the phospholipid bilayer. And for this, we'll need a new piece of paper. Right, okay, so let's say we have our synaptotagmin here. So here are these two domains, the C2A domain and the C2B domain. So this is C2A and this is C2B. Okay, and I will colour these in the colours I have stuck to previously. So this is in green here. Okay, and Let's say that both of these domains have bound their calcium. So free calciums have bound to the C2A domain and raised the electrical potential of that domain. And meanwhile, two calcium ions here have bound to the C2B domain and raised the electrical potential of that domain. Right. Now what's going to happen is these two domains are going to start interacting with lipids in the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so let's say here is the phospholipid bilayer. Right. Now, let me show you um, the structure of these two different lipids. So, um, basically, let's start off with the structure of a normal phospholipid that makes up the phospholipid bilayer, and then we'll see how these two lipids that the synaptotagmin protein is going to interact with are effectively just modified phospholipids. So, if we draw another phospholipid bilayer out here, then the structure of a normal phospholipid is that you have these two long-chain carboxylic acids which are esterified to the first and second hydroxyl groups of a glycerol molecule. And then off the third hydroxyl group of the glycerol molecule, there is a phosphate group esterified via a phosphoester bond. Okay, so in green here, this is the backbone of the phospholipid. This is the glycerol molecule. So this make, forms the backbone of our uh, phospholipids. So this is glycerol. Now the full name for glycerol, the chemist's name for glycerol, is propane 1, 2, 3, trial. Okay? And although that's a mouthful, the, um, the nice thing about propane 1, 2, 3 trial as a name is that it tells you exactly what it is. It's a free carbon molecule where all of the carbons on that molecule have an alcohol group coming off it. Okay, now, the first two carbons have their hydroxyl groups, and esterified to those two hydroxyl groups are long-chain carboxylic acids, also referred to as fatty acids. So these in orange, these represent fatty acids, or again, the proper chemist's name for a fatty acid is a long-chain carboxylic acid, so long-chain carboxylic acid. And these bind to those hydroxyl groups, or those alcohol groups, by ester links. Okay, right. And then finally, off the third hydroxyl group of the glycerol molecule, over here, is a phosphate group bound via a phosphoester bond 
to that third hydroxyl group. So this is a phosphate group. Phosphate group. Okay, and now the whole structure, all of this together, this is known as a phospholipid. So this is a phospholipid. Now, the old name for a phospholipid, which you will occasionally hear biochemists use, is a phosphatidate molecule. And although actually people generally don't refer to normal phospholipids like this as phosphatidate molecules, um, phosphatidate, knowing that name, is useful for understanding the names of the modified phospholipids. So, it's these modified phospholipids that are also constituent members of the phospholipid bilayer, which are uh, going to be bound to by these C2A and C2B domains of the synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 protein. Okay, so, the first one we're going to discuss then is a molecule known as phosphatidylserine. Okay, and now that I've told you what phosphatidate is, I hope that you should be able to maybe have some intuition for what phosphatidylserine is. So basically, this is just a modified phosphatidate molecule. What you do is you take a normal phosphatidate molecule. Here we have our normal phosphatidate molecule. Let's colour it in. So here's our glycerol backbone in green. Here's our long-chain carboxylic acids in orange. Here's our phosphate head in red. And basically, this phosphate head, it has another hydroxyl group. There's another hydroxyl group which is free on this side. And what you're going to do is you're going to link off it a serine molecule, like so. Okay, which I'll show as a blue triangle here in our cartoon. So basically, phosphatidylserine is basically just serine with a phosphatidyl group stuck off it, a phosphatidate molecule stuck off it. That's all this phosphatidyl means. It just means a phosphatidate molecule stuck off something. Okay? So you just stick off a serine molecule, a phosphatidyl, or a phos well, phosphatidyl group. So this is a serine molecule. Now, Hopefully you can see that this is just a modified phosphatidate molecule. So, you can put this molecule into the phospholipid by there next to the normal old phosphatidate molecule and it will function perfectly fine. Okay, yes, it has a bigger head than the normal phospholipid, but it will function just fine in the plasma membrane and that is indeed a normal component of the phospholipid by there. Okay, now, why is this important? Well, basically, the C2A domain of the synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 protein is going to bind to the phosphatidylserine uh, molecules which are in the phospholipid by there. So let me show one of these. So here, drawn here, is our phosphatidylserine molecule. Okay, so I'm just copying this picture out again. So here are our long chain carboxylic acids or our hydrophobic tails of the uh, phosphatidylserine molecule. Here's our glycerol backbone here in green. Here's our phosphate head in red here. And here's our 